before we talk about central limit theorem let's talk about probability distributions so when we say probability distribution that is the distribution which tells that what is the probability of something happening we will be talking about these probability distributions in much detail later where we will be talking about normal distribution binomial distribution etc etc so let's understand here what a probability distribution is so probability distribution is the distribution of probability let's understand that with a simple example of rolling a dice so you have a dice so let me put a dice here which has dots from 1 to 6 so you have one here you have two here and you have three here four five six on the back of this so once you roll that there is one sixth chance that you will get one there is one sixth chance that you will get two at the top and there is one sixth chance you will get any other number three four five six so if you take one dice and keep on rolling this infinite number of time so what you will get is you will get something distribution something like this which will be for one so this is your one the chance of getting one so two three four five and six and this will be one by six the probability here is one by six so you have one by six probability of any of these numbers coming so this is what your probability distribution would look like now let's play a game here that instead of one i make this one as two so what i do here is i take this dice and on the face one i put another dot and make it two so now on this dice i have two twos and rest all remains the same and now if i roll this dice number of times so what will happen is the probability distribution will look something like this that for one there is no chance because there is no one on this dice for two there is a two by six chance for two three four five six and for rest all there is a chance is one by six so this is what we, your probability distribution will look like so you have a different type of probability distributions for different scenarios another common distribution is a normal distribution or a bell shaped curve which is something like this so this is another distribution which is quite common and this is a very important distribution when we talk of statistics here number of times you will prefer to have a normal distribution because with the normal distribution you can do a lot more calculations as you will see further so now what this central limit theorem tells is that if i take let's say four samples out of this and take a mean of that so i roll this dice and let's say i get number two i get number three i get number six and i get number three again let's say and the average of this if i take and average of this will be 6 plus 3 9 10 11 12 13 14 so this will be 14 by 4 which will come out to be 7 by 2 is equal to 3.5 so 3.5 is the average when i rolled this dice four times i again roll that and again note that down so i get two i get another two i get six and i get four let's say here also it comes out to be by chance 14 as a sum and 14 by 4 is equal to 3.5 and i keep on doing this now instead of drawing the distribution of single items which i did here at the top now if i draw the distribution of these averages 3.5 3.5 so what i would do is i will draw a curve so here i have 1 2 3 four five six so once i get 3.5 i put a point here i get another 3.5 i put another point here and i keep on doing this a large number of times so what will happen is i will get number of dots here getting an average of six will be rare because to get an average of six i should get all the four rolls as six getting the average as 2 is also low 
so i'll be getting something like this let's say so most of the readings will be in the middle so what i get here is a sort of a normal distribution or a normal or a bell shaped curve and this is exactly what central limit theorem is it says that whatever your distribution is because this distribution initially or this distribution here these were not normal these were not normal distributions but once you start drawing number of samples from this in our case we took four samples and we took average of that so average of four samples when you draw or as this four gets increased from four let's say if you draw six items every time or eight items your curve of your distribution of the mean will tend to become a normal distribution irrespective of whatever distribution you had originally you will see this concept in control charts in control charts when we will talk about x bar r chart we will be drawing four samples five samples from the production line taking the average of that and that average we will be plotting as x bar in that case that average will behave like a normal distribution even if your original distribution might not be normal distribution and that is the essence of central limit theorem so whatever we discussed on the previous slide let's put that in official formal terms and that is that for almost all populations the sampling distribution of means so that's what we were talking about the sampling distribution of the means we were taking means and we were drawing the sampling distribution of that can be approximated closely by a normal distribution provided the sample size is sufficiently large so when your sample size is sufficiently large the sampling distribution of means will be approximately equal to the normal distribution so that's the formal definition of central limit theorem let's look some of the examples here so for example if you have a distribution if your original distribution was something like this and this was the sort of distribution we had when we were rolling dice having 1 to 6 so this was the sort of distribution we had which was a flat distribution and this curve was drawn with n is equal to 1 so every time we take a sample every time we take a reading of rolling the dice we draw that you will get something like this which is a flat distribution now instead of 1 if we take two samples and average that the same distribution will become something like this take more samples n is equal to 5 your distribution of sample means will be something like this and instead of 5 if you take it let's say 10 samples this will be even narrow why this is so because let's say if this was 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you take 10 samples of rolling the dice there is hardly 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 any chance that you will get all 10 as 6 so there is no way you will get a average of 6 you cannot get a average of 6 when you take 10 readings of rolling this dice because for that all the 10 have to be 6s at the top the chance of that happening is low the chance of getting something middle value is more so your distribution will be like this so one thing you would have seen here from moving from n is equal to 5 to n is equal to 10 you will see that this normal distribution curve the width of this is getting reduced we will talk about that in next slide and similarly instead of flat even if your distribution is something like this triangular one that also when you take two readings will tend to become something like this take five readings of that average of that the this will become something like normal distribution and as we earlier talked if you instead of five if you take 10 readings this will even be narrow normal distribution curve which is narrower than when we took five readings so this is what central limit theorem is now the only one thing left out in this discussion is 
why this shape gets changed when we move from n is equal to 5 to n is equal to 10 how much narrow this becomes that we will talk on the next slide so to understand that why our normal distribution curve was getting narrower as we had more number of items and we averaged that to understand let's take a population here so we have a population so that's the population which we are studying population and as we earlier said the population has a mean represented by mu so mu is the mean of this and sigma is the standard deviation of this population now what we do is we take out let's say for example four items from this and take average of that then take another four items and take average of that this item x bar the first sample will be let's say x1 bar so we put here x1 bar so we took first sample of four and we took the average of that so this becomes x1 bar now what we do is we take another four samples so four more samples we take and we average that and that average becomes x2 bar and then we take a third sample that becomes x3 bar and so on so we keep on taking four samples in this example and we keep on taking average of that and we keep on recording this now what we have here is we have average of that four samples here now how does this look like what is the statistics related to this sample means so these sample means if i take the mean of all these things so mean of all these things will be x bar so x bar will be x1 bar plus x2 bar plus x3 bar whatever i have taken and i divide by number of samples which you have taken and this gives me x bar now this x bar is representative or the indication of the population mean so x bar will be roughly equal to mu what about sigma of this so we took sigma standard deviation for the population was sigma now what i do is if i take standard deviation of these means sample means then this will be represented by sigma x bar and this sigma x bar is the standard deviation of all these items x1 bar x2 bar x3 bar this will be equal to sigma divided by square root of n and in our specific case we took four samples so this will become sigma by four square root and this will be sigma by two so what does this mean is if i represent population here on normal distribution my population is represented here in the normal distribution this has a sigma sigma is the standard deviation and most of this curve is within plus minus three sigma plus three sigma minus three sigma so that is the width of my normal distribution here now if i draw the distribution of these sample means this sample mean distribution will be something like this this will be plus three for sample mean and this is sigma x bar and minus three sigma x bar so as you would see that the bottom curve is of half the width because sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by square root of n in this particular case when we were taking four samples this has become half of that if we take nine samples then this will become one third of this so this is another important thing which you need to remember for central limit theorem that whenever you take the standard deviation of sample means then that will be equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by square root of n so as we talked on the previous slide we had a population and the standard deviation of the population was sigma then we took out some samples and we took the sample mean and when we took the standard deviation of that which we represented by sigma x bar and which was equal to sigma by square root of n this sigma x bar which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means 
this is the standard deviation of sampling distribution of sample means which is a difficult word to pronounce but the simple name of this is also standard error of means so when you say sigma x bar you can call this as standard error of means